So, Erica knows you're here. And she promised me that she wouldn't tell anyone about this. I need you to make the same promise. There are people here who can help you. I don't need any help. I can handle things on my own. And how's that working out for you? Look, you're running from your father, and he's a pretty powerful guy. He doesn't have superpowers. He's just a man with money. A sick man with money. He's kept you prisoner, messed with your mind, physically abused you. But it's my problem, not yours. I've already put your family through way too much grief already. It was a mistake for me ever to even pass your father that note. Note? Yeah, a few weeks ago when we crossed paths at Confusion, I got a message to him. Saying what? Help me. I was desperate. But I should have known he wouldn't follow up on that. I'm sure he thought it was just another one of my stunts. And you're sure he got it? I'm sure. But Frankie, listen, you have to promise me that you won't tell anyone about this. Especially your father. Okay. Nobody. You know, Natalia, I was sure right about this one. How's that? Remember, you wanted to let Fred go from the get-go, but I picked away at his story until it broke big. Thanks to my investigative skills, we now know that Madison North is back in town. Excuse me? I think it's time to take your witness to the ER for some high-level debriefing and detoxing, Brad. You trying to get rid of me? Cadets follow orders, last I heard. Just like every bureaucracy I ever saw. Give someone a little power. All right, okay. Come on, Fred. Come on. Yeah, um, look, I don't know much, but Madison's back. Dad's questioning Erica Kane about it right now at the station. I think I'm gonna go down there and see what more I can find out there. You know how quick he kicked me and brought out? He said that he wanted to take care of it all by himself, of course. Well, that's you and Brad. He won't be kicking me out. You did a really great job on those ornaments, buddy. I like doing stuff with you, Dad. I like doing things with you, too, a whole lot. What would you say about us spending a little more time here? You mean move back home? Well, some things would have to happen before that, but uh, you'd like that, right? Yeah, good. JR? <laughs> Goldie! Hi! So, what is this I hear you're moving back in? I thought you were never coming back as long as Annie was here. That's right. That's exactly what I said. Jesse, I'm just not so sure you're taking this seriously enough. Well, if things are as bad as you say they are with Madison, I think it's time you let the police take over. All right, but I expect a full report by the end of the day. Okay, I guess this means you found out Madison back in town. I just came from treating her. Madison gave you a note and you ignored it. I kept it quiet. For your sake. For Randy's sake. But I checked it out. Had people put on it. They came back with nothing. So you didn't know her father was keeping her prisoner and beating her up? Well, I didn't know until Erica just told me. But I'm still not really sure. I mean, what if this whole thing is just staged? She got to backed up, run into a door, and how the hell did she just happen to end up where you could rescue her? Really? Listen to your father. His hard head is making a lot more sense than your soft heart. Why did you fire her? She's close with Zach, with Ryan, with all of my enemies. She was going to sandbag me. Is that true? Listen, I don't need to stand here and listen to trash talk like that from her or doubt from you. So I'm going to send you my bill. I'm out of here. Your trial starts tomorrow and you have no attorney. Whatever were you thinking? 
You don't know what it's like to be hated so universally. Oh, but I do. I do. I have to walk in that courtroom and have everybody's eyes on me, all against me, all wanting to see me convicted. S sometimes I, I feel like I'm going to be all alone in there, like, like nobody's going to be on my side. I'm sure that feels very lonely. 